Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, he is David Hale, ESPN. And I know something's up, David, when you are threading on Twitter. Something big is <laughs> happening. When I, got, when I got like an eight to ten part tweet thread from you related to the ACC. So Joe and I, we just finished up like kind of giving the parameters of what's going on with Clemson in this lawsuit. It looks very, very similar to the Florida State lawsuit without the ESPN juicy tidbits. Um, so I guess we could just kind of start with the why now when it's fairly obvious it's going to go about the same way as the Florida State with ping-ponging legal maneuvers and whatnot with no real end date in sight. So why now? I think there's, there's two answers to that. Um, the first and most obvious is the college football playoff. And I've been talking to folks around Clemson for a while. Like, this, this isn't new. They didn't suddenly decide yesterday that they wanted to do this. This has been in the offing for a while. They've just been working a lot more quietly than Florida State. Um, so, but without question, one of the things that was sort of holding up any sort of firm decision was, was getting an idea of what the future of the college football playoff was going to look like. Well, the mm -hmm. future is decided. And that decision is that the ACC is going to get roughly 60% of what the SEC and Big Ten get. So what was a problematic financial revenue disparity has gotten more problematic. And I think everybody knows will only continue to get more problematic. Um, so even stuff like the um, you know success initiatives that the ACC instituted, um, it's probably not going to come anywhere close to making up for the significant disparities that are at play. So writing's on the wall, there's not a good answer here. Um, and then part two is, is I think, the more interesting one, um, because I, I've asked this question to a lot of folks, including at Clemson. It's like, if Florida State was willing to be the canary in the coal mine, why, why go into the coal mine too? Why not let them figure out if this is a, a survivable situation, if there's an out here? Yeah. Um, and I think the answer is about uh, leverage and options. And so... We, we've heard about um, the ESPN window that comes up in a couple of years where they could drop the ACC agreement. I think this gives, with Clemson and Florida State both suggesting they're ready to leave, um, it gives them some leverage with ESPN. Uh, and it it means that the, the uh, track has been laid, basically. So uh, everybody that I have talked to, and this is from Florida State and Clemson down to, you know, Charlotte, Wake Forest, whomever you're talking to in college sports, expects that in a few years, things are going to look a good bit different. Mm -hmm. um, how different or in what ways are they different? I don't think anybody feels exactly sure yet. But the, the point is, and you pointed this out at the top, like, this is not an overnight process. Like this stuff ain't getting fixed tomorrow. There's not going to be an answer by the time football season starts. There's going to be whatever legal decisions come, and we haven't even decided on venue of the three that are our potentials now. Um, there will be appeals and appeals on top of that. So it is a long process. And the point I think that Clemson and Florida State are both at is like, until we start the process, we don't have any end point to the process. And so it is when they want to put, position themselves best that when the next chips fall and something, the, the next big shifts in college football's landscape happen, they are at least close to the door, if not already out the door. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't want to be the ones trying to play catch up. And, and I, I can completely understand that. Clemson made a point in their statement of saying, we did not announce we're trying to leave the ACC. And, and I think that is, while it might be sort of, um, a subjective splitting of hairs. Yeah, that's it, it is worth it is worth noting that I, I made this point yesterday on, on Twitter. It's like everything sounds good in theory. Everything's possible in theory. What we're trying to get at at Clemson and Florida State right now is deciding what reality is. What mm -hmm. are the real things in front of us? Um, and no decisions get made until those things get figured out. For context purposes, David, and you're joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline. I don't know if you know this, but you can actually sell your car to our friends at the Heaster Automotive Group. Oh. It's an important distinction, sir, not just buy them. Uh, for context purposes, though, you mentioned this new distribution model of the playoff. What was the old one? Was it just basically the the, the Power Five school uh, conferences had said we all get the same piece, or did you get more for having more teams in? Why would it spark Clemson to make this decision? Well, for one, um, the disparities are are wider. I mean, it's it's sort of like the the SEC and Big Ten have always been a little ahead of the ACC and everything, but it wasn't, uh, you know, so much that that the ACC 
couldn't survive. Now the, the differentiations are, are much wider. Um, I think, you know, before you had basically, if you were a team that played in the playoff, there was additional revenue for you, but the, the leagues largely, the power leagues largely split everything evenly with a group of five getting a much smaller uh, slice than that. I think as much as the money though, the way these negotiations played out was a real reminder of the line of demarcation. If you weren't already aware uh, of how separate these two leagues are from everybody else, I mean, the, the, the negotiation basically went like this. The SEC and the Big Ten said, take what we're offering or we will leave and do our own thing. Right. I mean, at, at that point, you understand that, that you are only playing, if you're in another league, you are playing at the SEC and Big Ten's uh, grace. Like, that. that's all you've got. Yes, no, that's it. That's exactly it. It goes beyond just the money. The money always matters. I mean, the, you can always trace every decision back to money, but there's something else at play here. And it's fairly clear that the Big Ten and the SEC are the ones who are calling the shots. They're the ones who are going to shape the future of college football one way or the other based on the format or maybe even based on two leagues that are just kind of doing a super league type thing where they got their divisions. But speaking of the money, and this is the part that I'm most curious about. I get that there's a financial divide. However, does Clemson, does FSU, let's say they, there's <laughs> there's levels to this. Let's say you do find and negotiate a way out of the ACC. That's going to cost you money. And I've been saying this for months now. The minute you file that lawsuit, it's not about beating the grant of rights because if you could beat the grant of rights, it would have already happened by now. The arguments that are being thrown out there are stuff that's being thrown at the wall. A lot of them, they're eye-rolling. If you ask any lawyer to look at this stuff, they're kind yeah. of eye-rolling arguments that they're making. Um, the argument that Clemson's making is that, you know, hey, you know, you don't have rights to us if we're out of the ACC. Right. That's the point of the grant of rights. <laughs> right. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for reminding us that's the point of the grant of rights. So I think this is all being negotiated. That's going to cost them money. Nobody knows what the answer to that is. So not only is it going to cost you money in legal fees and the exit fee in some form or fashion, but then you also have to have a landing spot. And this is the part that I find the most curious for, for both Clemson and Florida State and obviously North Carolina, who I think we can all agree is the – I, I used to call John Swafford the, nish, the, the ninja commissioner. I am now bestowing the ninja moniker to Bubba Cunningham as the ninja <laughs> AD. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that conversation separately. The point that I'm trying to make here long windedly is, does Clemson expect to get a full share when they jump to another conference? Does Florida State expect to get a full share when they jump to another conference? Because we've seen the precedent set both in the ACC where you got a school taking no money. And you got the Big Ten having schools essentially taking 40 cents on the dollar to get there. So what does Clemson and Florida State expect if they land in, say, the SEC or the Big Ten? So this is a great question. And, and you sort of have to look at it in, in, at, at each point in this process. So point one, what does it cost to get out of the ACC? That's what we're, to your point, negotiating now. Mm -hmm. And that dollar figure will say a lot about what ultimately happens and when it happens. Because... If we're still talking 500 plus million dollars, like <laughs> I just don't, there's not a scenario in which it makes sense to, to spend $500 million to leave a league when the, the, the underpinnings of college football are so up in the air anyway. And two years from now, it's like you may have just bought your way out of something that doesn't exist anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think that's part of it. And where that number falls probably dictates the next step, which is what are you willing to take from another league? Um, I have been told by multiple sources that, um, A, if, if they are clear of their grant of rights, that Florida State and Clemson would have a landing spot. Where that is, I think they would love to have both of the big-time leagues vying for them. Um, that's their best-case scenario. Uh, and so I think they're doing a lot to sort of gin that up. But they would probably have a landing spot. The question is for how much. I've been told by multiple sources that they would be willing to not accept, at least for the short term, next few years, um, the league network revenue because they would not have helped build that network. They were not a part of that network. That that, that would be something that would be set off separately, but that they would look for a full share of the actual league's TV contract. They would not be coming in on an SMU-like deal or, or certainly would not want to come in on a Washington, Oregon type of deal. Um, they view themselves as brands that, that warrant a full distribution. Now, again, how much are you willing to negotiate on that point probably depends on how much you won the negotiation on the first point with the ACC. 
Mm. Uh, there is a lot to be said, I think. Again, it always comes down to money, but there is a lot to be said for having a seat at the table. And that's a big part of this. I think that's part of why Washington and Oregon took the deal that they took. I think it's part of why SMU took the deal that they took. They're all looking to move up from the smaller table to the next bigger table. And and so I think Florida State and Clemson um, want that as much as they want the money. Uh, then you have the third question, which is, uh, you, you noted Bubba Cunningham. Uh, I... I think there's sort of a, a three-tiered look at the ACC right now. You have those three teams at the top, Carolina, Clemson, and Florida State, that would have genuine value and almost certainly a landing spot elsewhere in one of the two power leagues. Virginia might be added to that conversation, but they're really probably more a Big Ten, but not an SEC situation. I don't know. I'm sort of guessing at that. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. You, th- then you have the bottom tier that I think everybody understands, like Wake Forest, Boston College, Syracuse. Um, you're not going to, nobody's knocking down the door to, to, to add you. Uh, maybe you have a home in a, a future Big 12 if the ACC completely ex- implodes, but, but th- there's not a lot of incentive for them to look anywhere because where are they going to go? And you want that buyout money coming to you as long as the league remains intact. Mm-hmm. Then you have the sort of middle tier of teams, which is uh, NC State that's that's clinging as closely to the coattails of North Carolina as well, possible. Quick, quick context. I mean, this is news that's happened over the last couple of months, where the the the, the board of governors, the the the, B, the board of trustees for the system, recently changed things around where North Carolina cannot just unilaterally make these decisions, which sets things up for NC State and North Carol NC State and North Carolina to be kind of a package deal. The same way that Virginia and Virginia Tech was politically negotiated to get them into the ACC years ago. Yeah, and it's not like the Big Ten was dying to get UCLA. That was UCLA had to come with USC. Some of these things just work that way. Um, So, yeah, so I think you have some of this sort of middle tier, which is Miami, Virginia Tech, Virginia, um, NC State, that, uh, you know, it depends sort of what way the winds are blowing. And I think that will be a big question of like, what is the, the landscape of college football look like? And so I think there's a big, you know, when you talk about Bubba's role in all of this, it was pretty clear that Clemson and Florida State were eager to leave. It's pretty clear that pretty much everybody else doesn't have the real motivation to, to burn bridges at this point. And then there's North Carolina, which is the one team really straddling the fence and I think is the linchpin to sort of all of this. Because if Carolina decides that they're ready to go and that they have – they're going to – because – they are a, I mean, a basketball school. Let's be frank. They fit the the genre of the ACC better than anybody. They are, I mean, I think if you just say, say ACC to the average fan anywhere in the country, North Carolina is probably the first team they think of because it is sort of reflective of the brand of the ACC. It's a charter member. Um, for them to go would feel like something more than just losing one program from your league. It would be. It would feel like the beginning of the end. And I, having talked to Bubba Cunningham about this, I don't think there is a single fiber of his being that wants to be the guy that makes that decision. Yeah. But I also think he is keenly aware of the reality of, of college sports and where things are at right now. And he's not going to do anything that, that puts Carolina behind the eight ball either. Um, my guess is, uh, you know, if Nebraska wants to offer him two and a half million to take their AD job, he would probably leave this decision to somebody else if he could, uh, because I don't think it's one that he wants to, to make, but it, it is the reality of being, you know, this is sort of everybody in the ACC is in some way or another be, between a rock and a hard place. I know he had a job in Tulsa once, but I don't, I don't see Lawrence moving back to the middle of America. No. Um, <laughs> the old logic, David, was that South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama would never let a Florida State or a Clemson into the SEC. Do you think the old logic still applies, or is that purely going to be an, an, an ESPN decision? Um, I think, yes. Uh, it's hard to separate ESPN from the, the larger conversation here. Now, I should preface this by saying anybody who thinks that ESPN is wielding the power behind this is is not thinking very clearly, because it makes no sense for ESPN to sabotage the ACC. They are financially invested in maintaining the ACC as long as, as they can. Um, now, this will, uh, Joe, mean something to you. It feels a little bit like newspapers at this point in which they're, mm-hmm. they're squeezing out all the revenue that they can on a dying product, perhaps, but they mm-hmm. still want, there's, there's still a lot of money to be squeezed out of that, and so they're not looking forward to, to ruining it. Um, but the flip side of that 
uh, is that they don't want to lose these schools to, to their competition, which is Fox. Um, and SEC doesn't want to lose these schools to their competition, which is the Big Ten. And yeah. if you're the SEC, I mean, in some ways, the reason that, that Florida or South Carolina or Georgia don't want to add Clemson or Florida State is for recruiting. On yeah. the other hand, you don't want to open up your territory to a whole other conference. Now you're not just recruiting against Clemson and Florida State. You're recruiting against Penn State, Ohio State, um, potentially Notre Dame down the road because they all have sort of entry into what had been earmarked as – SEC territory. So um, it's really like a big game of risk at this point. You're trying to acquire territory or protect your own territory. You're also trying to protect your own financials as well, because I think this is another thing that is in play. Um, there's only so much money for these products, and then there's only so much money that you can distribute to your members. And that's why I get back to the calculus of what are you willing to take to join the exactly. SEC? I don't, exactly. And I think that that's to your point. I think you're exactly right. Like, does the conversation for, for South Carolina, Florida, or Georgia change if Clemson says we're coming for 60 cents on the dollar? Right. That's, that, that's, that's the thing that's the most intriguing part to all this. Because to your point, Joe, recruiting and all that stuff, I get it. But obviously, there are, you, you don't want to open yourself up to other things, right? So at that point, is well, what's it worth to me? And if I can still keep you financially at a disadvantage compared to me, because, hey, man, I just got lucky of region and which conference I chose 45 years ago. I'm going to use that to my advantage. And that's why I'm really, really curious about who gets what, because the SEC know even the SEC knows this. The reason why they haven't gone to nine conference games is because they know that's the last chip they have in negotiating any more money out of ESPN. And that's why they're holding on to it dearly. And you saw ESPN, and, and David, we're not trying to put you in an awkward position having you work at ESPN. These are just the market. I'm getting people. fired soon enough anyway. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, you know what? You can join OG Media. Join us. Join us. Maybe then your school will win a championship once you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We were the sacrifice. We decided. Somebody has to sacrifice. No, but the point is that I don't I don't know if, if fans understand that really at the end of the day, it's it's the money equation for this stuff. It's all about the money equation. And I can't imagine that the powers that be are going to be cool with Florida State. If Florida, you know, Florida, South Carolina are cool with them coming in at a full share at this point. Yeah. I mean, look, it was one thing to do this with Texas and Oklahoma because you were really only screwing over Texas A&M. Right. Who didn't have a whole lot of sway in the league either. Georgia and Florida are big bosses in the SEC. I don't know. Uh, frankly, if it came down to South Carolina being the only objection, my guess is it wouldn't matter much. But, but Georgia and Florida have some sway. Uh, and so, yeah, you're, you're 100% right. And look, the, the, the other, I, you know, we are uh, all college football fans, college sports fans. And so we tend to view it through that, that lens, which it, I, I wish the actual powers that be viewed it through that lens because we get a better product, I think. Yeah. But look at who these commissioners are. Look at who these ADs are now. Look at who gets hired for these jobs. They are TV executives. They are from the business world. They are not academics. They are not college sports people. Um, and so you're, you're 100% right, Joe. This comes down to the money. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it sounds almost uh, ridiculous to have to say that because it's, it's the way of the world. But um, it's just because... So little made sense about the financial structure of college sports for so long. I think it's sort of weird for people to wrap their head around the fact that like people are making business decisions right now. Yeah. David Hale, ESPN, we appreciate the time. Um, enjoy the enjoy the basketball. I mean, you know, yeah. this this was this was such a wonderful topic for Clemson to drop the start of the NCAA tournament because you know, you absolutely know there was a lot of podcasts out there. That were like, damn it, are we really going to try to have to talk about basketball when we really want to talk about football? Do we really want to talk about spring ball? No, we got it. We I got like that. There, there, in my, in my opinion, there are only two true holidays uh, anymore, and it's, uh, it's Christmas and then the start of the NCAA tournament. And uh, Florida State uh, two days before one, and Clemson two days before the other, dropping these lawsuits. So fun I times. It. I love Cheers. it. Cheers. All right, David, appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you later. See you guys. 